Hey everybody, what's going on? Eric here. Hope everyone's doing well. Now I'll talk about the Elise DM6 drum set. It's been a great practice drum set, lacking a couple of things that uh, you might want to expand or to do a few things that uh, you can't do um, without buying a whole new drum set. This is going to be a little bit of a hack that I was uh, trying to figure out and reading a lot of different things on the internet about this to see if I could do. And the hack, well, you'll see. See, it just doesn't sound right when you have a crash symbol and the right symbol at the same time. So I gotta go back in the settings, change the preset to what I'm looking for as far as having a second crash symbol. Yeah, see, this doesn't work so well. So now I gotta go back in and change that symbol back to what I had it before, as far as being a right symbol goes. And then I lose the crash. Yeah, pain in the ass. All right, so first step. Locate your wire for your snare drum. Now I keep everything loomed up uh, pretty nice and neat. I don't like wires hanging all over the place. So I've already traced down the wire for my snare. And you want to kind of like lightly trim off the insulation that is around the wires. There should be three wires inside there. Uh, you'll have two triggers and a ground. The reason why you have two triggers is because the snare drum is the only one of the pads that has a dual zone uh, system on it and uh, yeah so you want to be careful not to cut too deep and just lightly skim off a little bit at a time the insulation that is covering the wires and I will show you a little bit of uh, what to do after this So here I'm starting to expose one of the wires, which is a pink wire. Now doing some research, I found that there was, uh, I guess all harnesses are not created equal. One harness had a yellow wire in it. Now this one here looks like it has a pink, or it could be red, depending. Um, white and black. Black would be your ground and the color wires would be your triggers. Again, be very careful when you're stripping the wires. You don't want to cut into the wire to expose any metal yet. And you don't need to trim off a lot of it, just enough to where you could tap your wiring. So here you can see there is a black, a white, and red or pink. Kind of has a pink tint to it because of the uh, powder that they put inside the harness. Alright, so this is step two. Basically what I'm doing is I'm testing the wires. I have the module turned on and I want to see if there's any type of voltage or anything coming out of the plug itself for the triggers on the snare pad. So 
I'm going to locate the ground, usually on a dual stage plug like this, uh, the ground is the larger area closer to the part that you would grab to pull the plug out. Remember, don't pull plugs out by the wires, you could damage the wires at the plug. So stripping the ground wire, and then I'm going to locate uh, to make sure that that black is actually a ground by testing continuity. And really what you want to do is you want to remove uh, anything that's plugged into a circuit because you can get a false reading from that. So removing the harness from the module will guarantee me from getting a false reading on continuity. And uh, yeah, so basically I'm just disconnecting this thing and I'm going to go back with my multimeter and uh, on set to continuity and test the ground to make sure that it is the large area on the plug itself which luckily it is. So I'm getting continuity. Now what I did with this is while the machine was running, the module was on, I ended up taking and kind of pulling the plug out a little bit to try to determine uh, what part of this plug was connecting to the snare, what part of the plug was connecting. Because sometimes, even with headphones, if you pull the plug out, sometimes one channel will go out and the other channel will still be kind of working. That can give you an idea of uh, the step in the plug itself and how it works. So right now I'm testing the white wire. The tips on my multimeter uh, wires are uh, uh, kind of worn out. Usually you could stab the insulation with the tip and kind of get in there to test the wire without having to strip it. Well, I kind of had to strip the insulation off the wire to do this. So with the main harness not being in circuit I can go ahead and check to see what part of my plug is the white wire and come to find out that the the part that I was thinking of as far as the step down on the plug itself was the middle connection was given me continuity so that right there in the test I did with unplugging the snare kind of showed that the uh, uh, the center would be basically the trigger for the rim. Now I need to cut the wire because I don't want that to be active anymore as far as being plugged in to the snare drum. Uh, I don't want to have any type of a noise or anything when I hit the snare drum uh, bleeding through to the uh, symbol that I'm going to connect to it later. So I'm going to connect everything back into place. Uh, you don't necessarily have to mount anything, shutting the power off and uh, Testing to see if my correction was right as far as the snare. And yep, I had a snare, but no more rim. Now to go to uh, step three. So let's get into that. So it is the white wire that is the trigger. All right, so this is the fun part of every video, doing an unboxing. And kind of like how the creative box that the seller made here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this thing up. And uh, hopefully everything that I ordered came. I hope. All right. All right. Let's get inside of here and see what we got. Well, I already kind of said what I got. So here is the symbol. Put that off to the side. This should be part of the mount for the symbol. Here's the bracket. And this looks like the rod to hold the symbol on. Crazy glue. Stay up there. All right, so let's get this out of the package. Again, creative wrapping. Follow the lines of the way this guy did this. Hopefully I can get it up. All right, so I got the bracket. And one thing I want to make sure of is to make sure these two screws here are tight. They come loose. 
just from vibration. So I'm going to go ahead and tighten those up, make sure that they are tight. Yep, they're good. And let's get this thing here. It's got the dampener on it too. Yep, everything's there. This screw here, basically, you can kind of turn this thing around, whichever way you want it. Go ahead and loosen this up to make sure this is still not broken, because all it is is plastic. Alright, so I'll slide this into place. Once I get it in there, it's not what I wanted to do. Oh, they got a spring loaded inside here, huh? That's why I couldn't get the damn thing in there. That's better. Alright, so I'll have to mess around with the way that I want to set this up later. Now from the DM6 and the micro mesh, these are different. So you want to make sure you get the right size one. Uh, usually they'll say which one they are. And let's go ahead and open this thing. All right, so I got this used and uh, I knew I was getting them one that was used, but I needed to get one that was for this setup here because um, they are different and another thing you might want to consider holding on to if you're going to do something like this is if you ever get a guitar that comes with one of these cheap patch cords well guess what I'm going to need it this is a single stage patch cord and which is a single zone and all I need is just the this side here the rest of this I am going to cut off the end over here now I'm not going to throw this away I'll cut off probably about like all the way back over here reason being is you always use these things for something else all right so what I want to do is strip this wire Yeah, I'll give it a kind of a healthy, strip it down a little, a lot. They always put a cheesy ass ground wire inside here. All right, so I'm gonna twist that ground. Make sure that it's got a good tight twist to it. So it's not gonna fray on you, and you just strip off the positive. That's why I got a groove in my teeth from uh, cutting wires. All right, so now what I wanna do is go back over to the drum set, connect this, just like that. That's why I kept the angled side of it, and connect this to the wire that I stripped and check to see if I'm going to get any noise from the trigger. Let's go check that out. All right, step three, getting this thing wired up. So I'm going to, going to connect the ground first. I'm just wrapping it around what I stripped already. Everything's going to be done loosely. I'll make the final connections when I get everything mounted and get my wires run to where they need to be. Now I'm going to connect the positive and I'm going to start going through some of the settings. So now the symbol sounds like the rim of the snare and the snare is still a snare. So now I'm going to go through the settings on the module itself to find where the symbol settings are and to get the symbol to sound like a symbol. 
So I could use basically any preset I want to use as far as any drum pad or cymbal there is on this thing. Uh, it's kind of nice to be able to have that, but lacking a cymbal. All right, so now I'll have two crash cymbals and a ride cymbal. Snare still works, I'm done. All right, so it's about 2.10 in the morning on a Friday morning. Uh, this homeschooling and everything else is basically priority right now with the homework and stuff for my daughter. Uh, everything that I want to do, I kind of put on hold a little bit. I got time, usually at night, to work on it. But right now it's pretty late, I want to go to bed. Everything is basically done, tested, and working. The only thing I have to do is final assembly and tidy up the wires and get the soldering done. Uh, that could be for next video, and then I could do a final test to see how everything works out, the way it works out. I really don't use the rim of the snare drum, um, and I did a lot of research of trying to find out how to do this and really found nothing. There was a blog site of somebody who had a DM6, and he wanted to add another symbol to it because he didn't have the two crash symbols and then the ride symbol off to the side. But the way that this guy was doing it is he basically put a Y adapter off of one symbol and went to another symbol with it, which didn't give him the um, opportunity to change the settings of the symbol so you have two different crash symbols instead of two sounding the same. So I thought of this and it's kind of like, well, there's no information about it. Uh, I'm going to make some information about it. So hopefully this helps out anybody else who wants to basically do the same thing, who has an older set of the electric drums. The Elise uh, DM6 is not a bad setup. It's pretty basic. Um, when I get better at playing drums, I am going to go get the, uh, was it the uh, micro mesh or something like that? The Elise uh, Nitro mesh, something like that which gives you an option of adding more symbols on it and another snare. So right now, everything is done as far as today goes. And next video will be, basically you'll be seeing how this thing works. And uh, so far, it's going to work out just great. Thanks for watching. Take care, guys, and have a good one.